Hey, what's going on everyone? Greg here. And as you can see behind me, we have a very familiar face, the 2019 iMac. And I say it's a familiar face because it hasn't received a design update since 2012. So it still has the same exact exterior design from all those years ago. But what has changed is the inside of this machine. And it changed quite a lot from the 2017 iMac, which is the last time this was updated. And it went from a four core processor on the top end from that 2017 model, all the way to an eight core, 3.6 gigahertz i9 eight core processor with turbo boost up to five gigahertz. And if you're just reading the paper spec sheet of this processor, this thing might be more powerful than the base level, entry level iMac Pro. Aside from that nice CPU boost from a four core to an eight core, we're also getting increased graphics in this model. Now this is a top of the line iMac. This is specced out to the max configuration on both the CPU and GPU. And with that GPU, you're getting a Radeon Vega 48 inside of it with eight gigabytes of memory. So for this video, I want to do something that's a little bit different than what I would normally do. Normally I would take out the product use it and give my first impressions. Now, this is just a spec bump, so there really aren't any new groundbreaking features in this iMac, just new chips and GPUs inside of them. So I wanted to take the time to benchmark this iMac and also go over some other things like how to replace the RAM inside of this Mac. And for our purposes, we'll be doing three benchmarks. One will be the standard Geekbench benchmark, the Heaven benchmark for GPU, and then a Cinebench benchmark. Now, obviously this is already opened up, but let's go back in time and open this iMac up. So you can see as we open the cardboard box, we're greeted with a very protected, very covered iMac. We can start to remove some of the cardboard and the screen coverings to reveal our precious new 2019 iMac. We also have some accessories in the box, including a magic mouse and a magic keyboard, as well as a lightning cable to charge both of them. Now, before we power on this machine, I want to replace the RAM myself. Now, if you are purchasing a 2019 iMac, you do have the option to still replace the RAM yourself and it's quite an easy process. So if you are buying this machine, I would really recommend you follow these steps and replace the RAM yourself. It really does save you a lot of money instead of paying Apple directly to put that RAM inside of it. So to upgrade the RAM, you're gonna want to find a flat surface and you're gonna wanna put something soft under it. If you're unboxing this iMac for the first time, it comes with a protective cover, but you still might want to put something extra soft on it just in case these are expensive machines. So for me, what I do is I take a comforter and I put it on a table. After that, place the iMac screen flat on the table. Now you'll notice between the stand and the back of the iMac, there is this little indentation for a door opening. To open this RAM door, there is a button directly located where you would plug in the power cord to the iMac. Now make sure you just press the power button for a couple of seconds here to discharge any electricity, especially if you are upgrading this after the fact, you don't want anything to short circuit. So it's best to make sure that there's no power remaining in the power supply and obviously make sure the iMac is unplugged as well. Now this door can be a little tricky to open so you're gonna wanna find something like a little flathead screwdriver and just press really hard on that button and then the RAM door will pop open. After that, you'll see two tabs, just push those to the side and the RAM will come up. After that, just make sure you're putting in the RAM the correct way and then press down firmly till you hear a click and then just put in both RAM card slots. Now, if you did get this iMac, it does come with eight gigabytes of RAM. I just leave that in, I don't take it out. So I'm putting in 32 gigabytes of RAM and if you wanna purchase the exact RAM that I use for my iMac upgrade, which is a crucial 32 gigabytes of RAM, I will leave a link in the description. So by putting in these new RAM slots, that will give us a total of 40 gigabytes of RAM. Okay, now that the RAM is installed, we're ready to start benchmarking this Mac. Now, hopefully from these three benchmarks, we can kind of get some insight to see if this thing is thermal throttling at all and to see how loud the fan is under some stressful tests. Okay, for the first benchmark, let's do a Geekbench, and that seems to be pretty much the standard benchmark for almost any product nowadays, for phones, for tablets, for laptops, and of course, desktops. So as we let our Geekbench finish out here, for the single core score on this 2019 iMac, we are getting a 5,940, and on the multi-core score, we're getting an impressive 33,209. This is very interesting because this single core score is higher than the 
iMac Pro. And I've also seen other Geekbench scores on other 2019 iMac machines that even score into the 6,000 range, which is higher than the Geekbench we ran here. Now, what is cool is that my iMac currently has the highest multi-core score, which is the highest I've seen at 33,000. I usually see that the multi-core score on Geekbench's website is around 32,000. So if you're taking notes, this means that the 2019 iMac currently has the fastest single core performance of any iMac Pro, even the top level configurations. And for the multi-core score, it's higher than the base level $5,000 iMac Pro. And this machine personally cost me $3,400. All right, for the next benchmark, let's benchmark the new Radeon Vega 48 GPU inside of the 2019 iMac. For that, we're going to open up the Heaven benchmark. Now I'm going to set this at the ultra setting for the benchmark. And we're just going to let the benchmark run for a little bit. You can see that the Heaven benchmark is running. It's running through some graphically intensive things. Now there are a couple things I wanna highlight while this benchmark is running. The first being is that the GPU is getting very, very hot as we run this benchmark on ultra, getting into the 95 degrees Celsius territory. I also wanna take a moment for you to hear the fans as this benchmark has been running for about two minutes now, and the fans are getting very, very loud. Now, as we finish this benchmark, we can see that we're getting a 52.1 on the FPS, a minimum FPS of 15.1, and a max FPS of 91.1, with an overall score of 1,313. Okay, and for our last benchmark, we're going to be using the Cinebench R20 benchmark. Now, before we get into this, I want to highlight that I really couldn't find any other scores for max on this benchmark. This is a newly released benchmark and I haven't seen anything for the 2019 IMAX or the iMac Pro, which is really what I wanted to compare it to. And I couldn't find the older version of Cinebench R15 available to download in the making of this video. So hopefully we get some newer benchmarks, but for now I don't have anything to compare it to. However, what I can do with this benchmark is open up the Intel Power Gadget at the same time this benchmark is running because this benchmark utilizes a lot of CPU resources and we can see if maybe there's any thermal throttling when running this benchmark. Now, as we're running this benchmark, you can see that the CPU is in within 99% of utilization and the clock speeds as we're running this with the Intel power gadget don't seem to dip below the base clock speeds. That was the big controversy with the 2018 MacBook Pros is that it wasn't even hitting its advertised clock speeds. Now this is hitting about a 3.9 frequency on the CPU and the base clock speed of the 2019 iMac is a 3.6 gigahertz. So with this limited benchmark, I'm not really being thermal throttled below base clock speed. However, I'm still not getting the max turbo boost of five gigahertz, at least consistently. Sometimes it does turbo boost up to around 4.6, but it's not hitting it, it's not running at five gigahertz constantly. I ran this benchmark last to make sure that the iMac was nice and toasty from the other benchmarks, and I also ran this benchmark about three to four times in a row just to make sure that we were getting the temperature of that CPU nice and hot. Now this isn't a complete indication if there will be any major thermal throttling on this unit, I still have to do more tests with video editing, with rendering, where that process can go over a couple of minutes. And that is maybe when we'll start to see some major thermal throttling hitting this machine. But for a first look at it, this is looking pretty positive considering that the 2019 iMac did not get any upgrades to its cooling. Hopefully it doesn't look like we're going to run into a major thermal throttling issue like we did with that 2018 MacBook Pro. And as we complete this Cinebench benchmark, we're getting a score of 4,021. I can see that this is ranked as number four, which I guess is pretty high, considering the other processors on this list are very, very heavy multi-core processors. But like I said at the start of this benchmark, I was not able to really compare this directly to an iMac Pro. So if anyone does have Cinebench R20 and a base level iMac Pro, I would really be interested to hear what score you got. Okay, so the 2019 iMac did not receive any groundbreaking new features or any changes to the external design of this iMac. If you've purchased an iMac in the last couple of years, it's going to look exactly the same on the outside. With that being said, 
There does seem to be some really nice internal improvements, especially over the 2017 model. As it stands today, it looks like we're getting a machine that outscores the entry-level iMac Pro in multi-core performance, and also a machine that outperforms any Mac currently available in single-core performance. With that being said, there's also some other things you are getting with an iMac Pro, like a better graphics card inside of it, also a better cooling system with reduced fan noise, and also better RAM with ECC RAM. But for all intents and purposes, it looks like this 2019 iMac isn't going to be left in the dust in terms of performance, and it looks like we are getting a really, really excellent iMac that can compete at the pro level. All right, everyone, if you like this video, make sure you give me a like. If you wanna see more from my channel, make sure you're subscribed, including a more in-depth review of this iMac in the near future. And as always, I will see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.